Hey everyone, we're Bonnie. John. <laughs> and we are hashtag Team Bon John. And this is our 2020 Thor sequence. So we want to state up front that this video is not sponsored by Thor Motor Coach in any way. And this is a 100% honest review of our experience with this van. Just a reminder that if you found this video helpful in any way, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and let us know of any questions that you have in the comments below. Or if there's other videos you'd like to see on our channel, let us know in the comments as well. We purchased our 2020 Thor sequence in February of 2020 uh, for just under 80,000. If you're thinking that's pretty expensive, you're not wrong. However, we did tons of research on buying our own van versus building it out ourselves with, with what we wanted and found that we would have nearly spent just as much building out our own van with the same stuff. Uh, we're gonna be making a video dedicated to this topic and when we do, we'll put a link in uh, right here in this video so that you can go check that out. If buying this van new, it comes with a one year manufacturer warranty on the interior and the parts. So over the summer, we spent nearly four straight months in this van, pushing it to its limits while we still had a warranty on it. We wanted to wait until we had some solid experience in this van before making this video. Let's start with the exterior and the cockpit of our Thor sequence. One thing we loved about this van was all of the accessories and roof space that it came with. From the manufacturer, it included an automatic Thule awning, Thule bike racks, and Thule roof racks. We moved the Thule roof racks to the front of the van and purchased a roof basket to hold a spare tire, which is not included in the purchase of this van. We will put a link in the description below for that, that roof basket that we found. The Thor sequence also comes with a 180 watt, 10 amp solar panel, all hooked up and ready to go. When we moved the roof racks to the front of the van, this allowed enough space to be created to add a second solar panel to the roof, giving us 360 watts and 20 amps of solar power. The solar charger equipped in this van is actually large enough to handle up to 30 amps worth of solar. So if we really, really wanted to, we could add yet another solar panel that's maybe portable that we could place on the ground and move on the campsite wherever we wanted. So that's an option too if you really want to go all out with the solar. We managed to find an off-brand solar panel with identical specs on Amazon for much cheaper than the one that came with the van. And so far it works perfectly and we get up to full 20 amps charging all the time. If we're parked in straight sun at high noon, we easily get that 20 amps. We'll put a link in the description below of the solar panel that we found that we added to the van. We also upgraded the tires from the standard road tires this van came with to the infamous BF Goodrich all-terrain KO2 tires. These bad boys are amazing and have come in handy so many times when we wanted to camp inside national forests or BLM land. We're definitely gonna make a separate video about these tires. And again, we'll post a link to that video right here and also down in the description when we make it. We'll also put a link in the description for the tires themselves and the size that you need. One of the biggest dilemmas with any van is storage which is why we added our stowaway swing away cargo carrier to the back of the van. Honestly, this has been one of the most useful upgrades we've made to this van and we use it on every single trip. We put all of our outdoor chairs, our mat, grilling supplies, tools, leveling blocks, and more inside this thing with room to spare. The best feature of this storage container though is the fact that it swings away from the van allowing you to open both back doors so you can still access the rear of the vehicle. The manufacturer also customizes it to fit your vehicle and hitch, so you can put this on practically any vehicle. I'll put a link in the description below on where to find this. Alrighty, let's take a quick walk around the van and point out a couple of things. On the passenger side of the van, we've got two outlets that work when the van is using shore power, a propane hookup and a cable connection. On our driver's side, we've got our 30 amp shore power connection, another cable connection, 
our water fill and city fill connections, and a really handy light above all the sewer stuff. A black tank flush connection, the black and gray tank sewer connections, and what's supposed to be storage for a flexible RV sewer hose. One of our complaints about this van is that the hose storage doesn't fit any hose that we can find, and it's basically useless. Our theory is that because this van is designed and manufactured over in Europe, maybe the hose sizes over there are different. So instead of keeping our sewer hose inside the storage we wish we had, we keep it in the storage space located in the rear of the van, underneath the wardrobe. We keep our hose clean, so this doesn't really pose much of an issue with smell inside of the van or anything. We definitely want to make a separate video on how we keep our black and gray tanks so sparkly clean and when we do that we'll link to that video right here as well and put it in the description on the back of the van we have a backup camera as well that comes standard as well as a two inch hitch that also comes standard the last thing I wanna to touch on outside of the van is the generator. The Thor sequence comes equipped with a Cummins generator that is mounted underneath the van. Having a generator on board has been amazing. We have used it often and love having the flexibility of having electricity and air conditioning wherever and whenever we want it. However, the one thing you should know is that the generator as well as the two AGM batteries are mounted underneath the van and very, very low. If you thought the ProMaster rear axle was low to the ground already, you're gonna be really disappointed when you see how low the generator is. We have actually hit a bump on some national forest road that somehow ripped the wiring harness off of the generator. It's that low. Again, we wouldn't forego having the generator, but it's just a sacrifice you got to make to having one and should be something that you're aware of. Let's head to the driver's seat for a little bit more on the van itself. Our Thor sequence is built on a Dodge ProMaster 3500 V6 with 280 horsepower that uses unleaded gasoline, not diesel. And in our experience, gets about 14 to 16 miles per gallon, depending on where you're traveling and how much weight and water you have loaded. Driving this van is an extremely easy experience and really just feels like you're driving a large SUV. The rear view mirrors are close to the vehicle yet are able to show you all the surroundings of the van. There's also a button on the driver's side door that allows you to fold the mirrors in. This has been really handy a couple times for us if we're parked in a really tight spot or we're driving down like a tight mountain road and want to feel a little bit safer. This van came equipped with two leatherette seats that both swivel. While the driver's seat can only really swivel about halfway, the passenger seat swivels all the way around to meet a handy flip-up tabletop that also came equipped in the van. Let's dive into the part of the van that you've been waiting for, the cabin otherwise known as the space where all the magic happens. We purchased our Thor sequence in the 20L model floor plan, which includes two separate twin beds that convert into a king-ish size bed, the kitchen near the front, and the wet bath located in the back. Our van came with a 26-gallon freshwater holding tank, 13-gallon black tank, and 13 gallon gray tank. The freshwater tank is located inside the van under the passenger side bed, and the waste tanks are located underneath the van. The 20 pound, four and a half gallon propane tank is also located underneath the van and will last us months with using it for cooking and heating water. When it comes to the overall interior of this van, one of the reasons we loved this van so much was how open it felt inside with all the windows and the natural light coming in, and that the interior finishes were a bit more modern than in other RVs we looked at. However, after a year of regular wear and tear, we've come to learn that the interiors of this van is where the budget was maybe cut. The original window covers were these like beige roll down window shades that fell out of where they were mounted all the time. The metal thresholds and end caps are kind of loose and the drawer and door magnets either came off or weren't even there. Little stuff like this is cheap and easy to fix and replace, but it's still something to note. We will definitely be making a separate video on the things that we love and don't so much love about this van, and we'll link them here and in the description when we do make them. When you first walk into the van, you'll find the kitchen towards the front of the van. Our kitchen is equipped with a Dometic propane two burner stove, sink, 
combination convection oven and microwave, and an electric powered mini refrigerator with freezer. The kitchen also includes two storage drawers and two cabinets above the microwave. Moving along, we have two individual twin size beds that convert into a bed that's somewhere between a queen and a king size. Admittedly, it's not the easiest to convert this bed, but it is manageable. Usually once we make it, it stays that way for a couple days and we just climb over each other to get to the bathroom. And I could understand how that would be really inconvenient for some people. Above the bedroom is more cabinet storage and below the passenger side bed, you've got even more storage. This is usually where we'll store the tables that mount to the floor in the bedroom area to create a dining area or workspace. These tabletops are also what you use to convert the bed into a large bed. Behind our beds, we added some wallpaper to lighten up the interior and then added these nifty wall organizers that we found at Ikea. Heading into the wet bath in the rear of the van, our van came equipped with a flush toilet a shower, pull down sink, and medicine cabinet. On the other side of the bathroom, we also have a wardrobe with hanging storage and two large drawers. This wet bath was a huge reason we decided to purchase our van instead of building it ourselves. Especially during COVID, in the nearly four months that we traveled across the country, not once did we have to use a public bathroom or shower. And while we're on the topic, hot water. Our van came equipped with not only a propane powered hot water heater, but it also doubles as a furnace to heat the interior of the van. Our van is equipped with a Truma Combi combination hot water furnace system that uses the heated water to heat the space. Now we're from Florida and we thought we would never use this, but it turns out that we use this furnace quite often. When we're out in the desert or camping in the snow or even on a cold Florida day like this, it can get cold inside that van and having a heater built into the van has been a luxury. Yet another reason that we opted to buy our van instead of build it ourselves. I don't often see self-built vans that have a hot water heating system, let alone a furnace heating system. Hold on, something's happening. All right, the last thing I wanna show you guys is how everything in the van is controlled. When you first walk into the van, on the left-hand side is a wall-mounted tablet that uses an app called BM Pro, which controls nearly everything in the van. It controls the lights, the awning, the air conditioning, the generator. It shows you the status of your holding tanks, electricity, and more. And the coolest part is that you can download that same app on your phone and control everything from there. It's so handy when we're dumping the holding tanks and I can be standing outside the van and know when my tanks are empty and my freshwater tank is full. This feature is definitely one thing that we love about the van. Even for people who aren't so technologically savvy, uh, I think that this app is a fairly user-friendly one and is easy to catch on. And that's our van. Remember, if you guys found this video useful at all, please make sure that you like it, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more van videos or comment down below and let us know if you have any questions or if there's other videos that you want to see. Thanks for visiting our channel and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>